Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today to explore um, an incredible little lap of luxury um, in remote parts of Baja California Sur. Uh, we're joined today by Brian Horegi, Brian, sorry, <laughs> of Toro Santos Eco Adventures, and she's going to take us through an itinerary that has been put together um, really with great detail in terms of um, consideration for health, hygiene, and comfort in this day and age of travel. Um, we know that's what everybody's looking for. So um, if you do have any questions, um, please plop, plop them into the Q&A or the chat box and we'll address those at the end. We'll keep this short and sweet so as not to take up too much of your time, um, but do encourage questions or reach out to either Brian or myself following the webinar. In addition, if you have to run, um, we will be recording it and I'll be sending that out to everybody that, um, that has attended or registered. So with that, Brian, I am going to hand it over to you and um, enjoy Baja, everybody. All right, th thank you so much, Sonia. And um, thank you everyone for, for joining us today. As Sonia said, I promise to keep it uh, short and sweet. So I'll hop right into it here. And the idea, as Sonia mentioned, is really to have an opportunity for people who want to travel together, small groups of family or friends or two families, that they can come and they can take over our remote locations together. And we've set up this itinerary so that we control every aspect of the itinerary. There's never a third party vendor. So we pick them up at the airport in uh, our vehicles. We take them to the, to the island in our boats. They stay at our camp so that we're controlling every aspect of the safety and cleanliness. And there are no third parties that we have to hope that they're keeping their standards as high as ours. So with that question, how remote is the remote luxury in Baja, California, sir. Well, Baja is known as Mexico's last frontier and we have the lowest population density of any state in Mexico. And this is a photo of the Sierra La Laguna Biosphere Reserve, which was actually part of an island off the coast of Baja 10 million years ago. And the area still reflects that island isolation. There's 25% of the plants and 10% of the animals found in the reserve are actually endemic to the area. They are not found any other place on the planet. And there was actually a recent study by the Next Generation Sonoran scientists, and they documented entirely new species of plants and insects that had never been uh, documented by man before. So it's so remote, they still don't even know half of what's back there right now. Uh, but it is only one hour from Todos Santos um, by, by truck. And our camp there is in a mango, avocado, and grapefruit orchard of a local ranching family. And I'll talk more about them in a minute. It is this remote. Uh, and this is uh, Camp Cecil de la Isla. And it's on an island in the middle of the Sea of Cortez. And this island, Espiritu Santo, is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's part of a national marine park that covers an area of 48,000 he uh, hectares. And because of its protected status, there are no permanent structures of any sort. We actually take the camp down at, in full at the end of every season. Uh, and this is an hour boat ride from La Paz. And this is Los Colibris Casitas, um, which is at the end of a bumpy dirt road in Todos Santos on a hill overlooking the ocean. Uh, there is no central lobby. All the casitas are completely standalone with their own rooms, their own bathrooms, their own rooftop terraces and or patios. And you can see that our pool area is already set up for uh, social distancing. So that's, that's in place. So what are the features of each place? And so what are the benefits of being so remote in these locations? So, one feature is incredibly comfortable beds. These are actually the same kind of beds that Sergio and I have in our home. Uh, these are the same kind of beds and they all have spectacular views. So starting in the upper left-hand corner there, that's the Sierra Camp. Uh, and you can just walk right out of your, uh, your, your tent there and grab a grapefruit or a, a mango off the tree. Uh, at Los Colibris, which is uh, to the right, every room has fantastic unobstructed views of the Pacific Ocean, 70 miles of beach, and the Palm Oasis. 
And then in the bottom left, you'll see there's the island and the ocean is just a few feet from your door right there. The next benefit is uh, starry nights with no light pollution. Now in all of these photos, ironically, we've lit it up so you can actually see the tents and see the area. But the upper left there is, uh, is the Sierra camp. The upper right is the island camp. And then down below on the left is uh, Los Colibris Casitas. So amazing stargazing in all the locations, big Milky Way out there. And all the locations we have private chefs. That is, there's no public restaurants. So, uh, and that's part of the feature of controlling the cleanliness. Again, we, we make sure that we take care of all of this ourselves and not going to any public restaurants. And the emphasis in all the locations is on fantastic food. And on the left there in the Sierra camp is uh, traditional, cooking over a traditional wood-fired stove uh, with food from our own garden and from the ranchers. And on the island, they actually cook in a 12 by 14 tent on a three burner stove. And this is actually Edgar, who is the chef's nephew. And uh, he volunteered for the photo here. So in terms of where we eat, this is the Sierra camp. All the dining areas are outdoors. So we're never in an enclosed space. So there's always fresh air circulating. So they're never caught uh, in with the camp staff or, or the hotel staff. Uh, now the camps is only solar power, no generators or anything. So everything's beautifully quiet, lovely. This is Camp Cecil, the outdoor dining. So the ocean is right there where you're dining. And here at Los Colibris, um, this is actually where we start the trip. So the guests arrive at the airport in Cabo. Uh, we pick them up and bring them to Los Colibris, get them settled into their casitas. And then Iker does his gourmet taco welcome dinner here, which is just an insane feast with all these different dishes. And it's a great welcome. There's plenty of wine and beer to accompany that and have a good party situation there. Uh, and the next morning we get up, have breakfast, and we drive the hour uh, to the Sierra Camp. And um, the Sierra Camp is on Chito's Ranch. And you can see on the right-hand corner there, there's a picture of Chito and his mother, Angela. And Ranchero culture in Baja is the culture of Baja California, sir. When the Jesuits were kicked out very unceremoniously, the people they, they had imported from Spain to run their missions inherited these lands. So Chito and his mother are descendants of these people and they still have those same lands. Um, and so this is actually a whole family that we work with there. It's Chito and his mother. And then you see Delia on the upper left there is his cousin. And then one of our guides, Diego, is, uh, is his nephew. So it's really a family affair there. And one of the key parts of being up in the Sierras is uh, the ranchers are teaching us traditional skills up there. So you see uh, tortilla making, sweets making, uh, working with leather, and so on. And then, of course, there are just spectacular hikes up there. Uh, there's no one else hiking up there. A lot of this is still private land. And you can get these views, we can see all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. It's hard to tell in these photos, but the ocean is sitting right out there. And on the left-hand side, that's actually Chito, who hiked in the sandals that he made. We don't let anybody else do this except for Chito, and that's Diego, uh, his nephew. So now in the island camp, uh, the Sea of Cortez is home to 39% of the world's total number of marine mammal species. They count for a third of the world's marine cetacean species, and there's almost 900 fish species. So it is an amazing place for wildlife viewing, marine wildlife viewing. And the upper left-hand corner is a picture of the Pupo brothers, and they are 81 and 91 years old, and they are the last independent fishermen of uh, Isla Espiritu Santo, and they have a sort of little fishing camp on the, uh, on the, on the bay on the backside of where the Camp Cecil is, and they supply all the fish for the camp there. And of course, it is world-class uh, kayaking at Isla Espiritu Santo. People come from all over the world uh, to go kayaking there. The paddle boarding is amazing. And the picture of the turtle is here because in the area right in front of the camp, there's a type of algae that grows on the sea floor that the turtles love. So when you go out and you stand up paddleboard or in your kayak, 
you'll often see the turtles, they'll, they'll kind of come up and they'll flip their little, little butt set and they'll go all the way down and they'll get their algae and then they come up and they take a breath and go <gasps> to, to get the air when they're breathing. It sounds like a human. So it's really amazing. So we often get a lot of sea turtles um, around the camp and that's pretty exciting. There is a lot of amazing birding in all the locations, Los Colibris, Breeze, the Sierra Camp and the Island Camp. Over 430 bird species have been spotted in Baja California, Sur, including uh, six endemic species. And you can see there in the upper left there, those are blue-footed boobies. We have two blue-footed booby co uh, colonies uh, in the area of uh, Camp Cecil, the island camp. And actually the world's largest blue-footed booby uh, colony is in the Sea of Cortez. It's not near where we are, it's further north of here, but it is here and, and not the Galapagos as, as many people think. So great birding here. So what are we doing here about sort of health and sanitation? Um, our guides and our staff are taking a lot of courses at the moment. This is an online course that was given by the World Health Organization on the prevention and control of infections related by, to the coronavirus. Uh, this is a course that's, uh, given by uh, the Mexican Institute for Social Security. So these first two courses are not only about being taken by our guides, but our full housekeeping and camp staffs. And this is one that's given by the Mexican Health Secretariat. Uh, you actually need to have a woofer or above to take this course, well, this first responder or above to take this course, it's much more advanced. So we're really working on the training and we're also working with our, uh, for the hotels in Cabo and Baja California Sur, they have what they call a Punto Limpio or Clean Point program. And we are currently involved in, uh, in taking that. And then uh, in just a, another week or so, all the guides, the entire 40 of us, will all be taking an eight hour uh, course uh, for occupational health and safety related to, to COVID. And that is an OSHA compliant uh, course. So in terms of that's part of what we're uh, doing in terms of preparing for coming here. And then other things that we're doing, um, there is an accredited lab uh, in La Paz uh, where you can get a 24-hour test done, a PCR test, which is 99% accurate for testing for COVID-19. So if your clients are really concerned about who they're going to be interacting with, we can have the guides take a test at 24 hours before they come. Um, and, and of course, when your guests are here, uh, if they present with symptoms, we can get them tested here. Uh, we do have the touchless thermometers, so take everyone's temperature. Um, we have oximeters to check everyone's oxygen levels. We actually have the only oxygen making, um, private, I should say private oxygen making machine in the state. Uh, we had that when my father and uncle were living with us and uh, so they let us uh, keep it for, uh, for, for these days. So that we have that on hand. And then we also have uh, some excellent facilities here. In Todos Santos, we have a 24 hour emergency clinic uh, with English speaking staff. And then in uh, Cabo, there is a really beautiful hospital with English speaking doctors, uh, which is, is a great facility. We've had uh, good luck with that over the years. And they also accept um, US health insurance. So that's just sort of give you just a brief idea. And I think that's, that's kind of it. And Sonia, I'm open for questions now. Thanks so much, Brian. That was awesome. Short, sweet, and very, very as, tempting. As promised, as promised right? <laughs> yeah. No, it was super tempting. And um, in my opinion, if I could pull together a few friends, I'd be down there in a heartbeat to, to do that. Um, just with regard to the groups, um, the, the number of rooms at the various properties. So Camp Cecil de la Sierra has four tents, and we were talking about this earlier. Um, but because they'd be taking over, if, if somebody was taking over as a private group as we're sort of proposing it here, um, then once they got to Camp Cecil on the island, um, they basically if somebody had to share at the in the mountains, they could spread out on the islands. Is that correct? Absolutely right. So there's there are four tents uh, at the Sierra Camp, and there are eight tents at the island camp. Each of the tents can have a king bed or two twin beds. So yeah, so if there's brothers and sisters or other family members uh, who are willing to share when they're at the Sierras, but they don't necessarily want to share when they're at the island, they can absolutely spread out and take out the whole thing and everyone can have 
all eight people can have their own king beds if that's how they want to do it for sure okay awesome um and there was a request for you to talk a little bit more about the aquatic activities uh, at the island camp is of the isla um snorkeling scuba diving whale sharks i know that this maybe just make the clarification between those things that you can 100 percent or to the best of your ability manage so so at the at the camp um we offer swimming with the sea lions you saw, and which is insanely fun. It's just, they are so joyful and playful. And one of the great things about being at the island camp is we can get up and go in the morning before the day shippers are there. So we really have the sea lions to ourselves. Um, there is sea kayaking. We have all the kayaks at the camp. We have stand up paddle boards at the camp. And if you have groups who really want to do a lot of kayaking or a lot of paddle boarding or whatever it is, we can really incorporate that uh, into the into the camp. There's great hiking on the island. Actually, there's not they're not very long hikes, but you can get spectacular views. Um, and of course, there's great snorkeling. We do not provide uh, scuba diving. And if they want to use another vendor, we do work with companies that can, that can come and pick them up and take them scuba diving. But I wrote this itinerary to specifically to exclude other vendors. But certainly, people feel uh, that they want to. We can we can arrange that. So those the so those are so hiking, bird watching, snorkeling, stand up paddle boarding, kayaking, and then at all the all the locations for the for the meals, there's hot, uh, cold breakfast, hot breakfast, a full lunch, happy hour, and then dinner. So there's plenty of great food, and there's a real really strong emphasis on fantastic food in all the locations. And one of the reputations that we're lucky enough to enjoy is that each location is a great, great restaurant unto itself. Yeah, I can vouch for that. <laughs> it's so, so good. Every, every, every <laughs> single meal. Yeah. yeah. Creative and fresh and wow. And certainly the Pulpo brothers really make it with the fresh fish out on the island. Well, um, this, this is part of the thing too, that for the camps that we really are, working with the the local the local ranchers the local fishermen so you're really getting a cultural aspect not just the beautiful remote location but you have a, a really strong cultural aspect every place you go yeah it's it is it's amazing um and could you just mention seasonality so folks know kind of get have an idea of best times to book this given when the the camps are open generally the best times are november through the end of april that's, that's really the high season. The Sierra camp gets a little too warm after that. Camp, mm -hmm. The island camp will, will uh, start keeping open until the middle of June, uh, and it's still beautiful then. So, and of course, uh, Los Colibris is open most of the year. We only close it for a few weeks when, hopefully Sergio and I will be going away again sometime soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we only close that for a few weeks. So really, but November to the end of April is what you can definitely count on for both the camps and okay. the, the island till the middle of June. Okay, perfect. And um, just to make note for everybody that's, um, that's um, attending, um, this is a this is a proposed itinerary that we've put together that just flows really nicely and involves a lot of great activities and touch points of the different areas um, around Baja California Sur. But um, as you mentioned earlier, Brian, a takeover of Camp Cecil on the island for several days instead of combining it with various other that can happen or more time at Los Colibris and all of the activities in Toros Santos. So there's really many many ways this can be put together. Exactly. This, this is just a flavor of what's available where people can really be with their own small group and, and take it over. But there's yeah. lots of different ways to, to, to put it together. So I invite everyone to be as creative and or to ask me to be as creative as possible. I'll be ha very happy to do that. Awesome. And, um, and if anybody wants details on pricing and whatnot, we'd be very happy to give that to you. It is an incredible value, certainly, for, for what you're getting for such a remote um naturally luxurious experience i think um well with that brian i think that's it for questions but um do you have anything else to add um at this point or uh no i think i think that's really it i mean i think it's just um 
I think one of the, the, the final thing that I will say is that one of the things that people, when people go to the camps, um, they really leave with a sense of having been made so welcome and so appreciated and really getting a glimpse into something that they wouldn't have seen otherwise. And, and I think that's super important is that, that care and the, the feeling that from our, our guides and our staff that they really want people to know and to love Baja California Sur. And they're really doing everything in their power to, to make, make that happen and make it a wonderful trip and to really share their knowledge and passion. So we really invite, and we invite all of you to come down and check it out for yourselves, of course. Yes, you should. I would, I would take her up on that. Um, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Brian. This was great. And we invite uh, all of you to reach out to us if you have any further questions or potentially a group that's interested. Thanks so much, Sonia. Thank you, Brian. Have a great day, everybody. Yes. Adios.